Hello, people. Thanks for joining me again. Dan Behrens from Claremont, California sent me this 1983 G&L El Toro base. And he was a little concerned about the ski jump up here and how it's not as comfortable to play as he'd like it to be. Even though he's already made some few attempts at straightening the neck, um, I'm going to try to improve it a little bit more. Uh, I went through and found that there are a couple high frets. 12th fret on the base side, 7th fret on the treble side. There's no tension on the truss rod right now. But he had it where it was in a slight back bow with no string tension. With string tension, it, was, uh, it had pretty nice relief. But there's one thing I want to show you. Can you see that little bulge right there on the rosewood? In between these two strings, the wood bulges out. And I didn't realize this at the time that he sent it to me, but he actually stacked a, a stack of lock washers down inside of here and cranked the truss rod down. Well, I was hoping I could just dig them out, but uh, there was no such luck. They're permanently embedded down in there for now. Um, I did go and I backed out the silver bullet truss rod nut and uh, made sure that the bottom of it was nice and flat and clean. And I inserted one of these flat washers on top of the stack of lock washers. So it has some, and I, I lubricated it with the Vaseline so that when we turn it, we've got a little bit um, extra. We can get a couple extra turns out of it. And it has a nice flat surface to work with. So having a lock washer against there is a real coarse surface. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I heat the neck and press it into a back bow. And in this case, I'm going to let it set for like four or five days because I'm going out of town. And when I get back, I'll tighten the truss rod. It should stay in a back bow and it should uh, straighten out into a slight relief when I put the string tension back on it. So let's heat her up. We're not going to heat her up just yet. We're going to do a little bit of fret work. We've got two high frets and a huge ski jump. So, seventh fret on the treble side. And get these strings out of the way. If I take a shorter straight edge, you can hear it rocking. And I like to use the pillar file from Stumac. It uh, doesn't rock on the base side at all, it's just the treble side. Another thing you can do before you start filing away, which I did not do, but I could have done, is take like a four thousandth or three thousandths of an inch feeler gauge and see if you can get it underneath the fret. Sometimes if you can get that feeler gauge under the fret, that means the fret's not seated well. This one looks like it is seated pretty good. I can't get the feeler gauge under there, so. It's seated, but it's just a little proud. And I just file and recheck. A little bit in the, right there. Want to get it so it's completely level so that we can get the string action as low as possible. And then, um, now that that's level, we can hit it with this Z file original to recrown it. The original is good for kind of low frets. These are at 35 thousandths of an inch tall. And these are wide frets, jumbo frets. They're 107 thousandths of an inch wide. All right, and I'll move on down to the 12th fret, do the same thing. 12th fret is a little worse. 
you can hear it rocking. It's just on the base side, 12th fret base side, not, nothing, it's, it's perfectly level on the treble side. So I'm going to take material off the base side till I no longer hear the fret rocker rocking. You can count to 10 or whatever, 8, 10 swipes and recheck. You don't want to go past the point of no return like Kansas. And now for the ski jump. It's not that bad of a ski jump. See I have all these different lengths of uh, straight edges and I use the, what is that, a, a 10 inch to measure the ski jump. It should be kind of resting on these frets and then we should have fall away. I should be able to feel, put the feeler gauge under in this area, but as you can see, I can't. And that's because these frets are higher. So I can put my, I can start putting my feeler gauge under at this point. See, and then it goes, some of these frets are, some of these frets are a little wonky actually. I think what I should do is take the leveling beam and just take all these frets down. First thing I'll do is measure the height of the high frets. 35 thousandths of an inch. 34, 35. And take this. But you catch the drift. I'm going to keep filing away and crown these frets and polish them up. Then we'll heat it up. Okay, I'm getting ready to warm up that neck. I usually like to get it up to about 150 to 175 degrees in the middle um, for about 20 minutes. And I have this piece of foam here because I, uh, I don't want to get too much heat on my nice Guitar Tech Deck workstation. Gotta protect that baby. Here's another angle. The uh, heat lamp is just suspended off of a microphone boom stand. And I can move it around. I can swivel it. I can, I can move the workstation around if I need to. So we'll be, we'll be moving that around a little bit here and there. Make sure we spread the warmth around. Here's another view. I don't know if you can see my laser pointer, but this is how I test, see what temperature I'm getting up to. You might notice a little steam coming off the wood. That's okay. It's not going to catch fire or anything. I'm up to 155 degrees right here in this area. And, you know, here's the boom stand. It's real nice because you can swivel it. Concentrate the heat here for a few minutes, here for a few minutes. A total of 20 minutes with a sustained heat between like, let's say 140 to 160. I think 175. Once you get to 175, you're pushing the envelope. Some people like to go to 200 degrees if they're uh, removing parts. You know, if I was degluing the fretboard, I'd probably want to get it up above 200 degrees, maybe put an iron right on here. But I have the heat lamp always ready to go. I always use it when I'm removing a nut from a guitar. I usually uh, use it to remove guitar bridges and I make sure I, you know, put uh, cardboard around the uh, surrounding lacquer around the bridge so I don't bubble it up and melt it. I'm going to show you what I do here before I clamp it up. Put the clamp on it. I got a clamp. I've got a hockey puck that I've cut in half on the bandsaw. 
and I've got the smooth side facing out. It's going to go under the back of the neck here. I've got radius blocks at the 12th fret and the 1st fret, and then I get a block of wood. Some people use a leveling beam. Some people use 2x4. And I put this at the 7th fret, actually at the 6th fret. Let's go 6th and, six and, six and a half. Right in between the 6th and 7th fret. And I clamp it down slowly. You don't want to crank it down all at once. You want to slowly put a back bow in that neck. Don't really have to, you know, use a lot of force. And that looks like a pretty good back bow. I can leave that set for a couple days. Uh, I found that leaving it for three days is really beneficial. One thing that you want to do before you heat up the neck is make sure that the truss rod nut has been loosened a bit. After it cools and it's set for three or four days, you can come back in and crank that sucker down really tight. I mean, until it's in a ridiculous looking back bow. And even before you take these clamps off, before you take the one clamp off, I should say, crank it down. This is in a couple days. You want to crank that sucker down put the strings up to full tension and let it set for a week and see where the uh, neck bow is at that point before you make any more adjustments. It's been a few days, it's still clamped up. Before I take the clamps off, I'm gonna tighten the truss rod. It's an eighth inch hex wrench for these old G&Ls. I tightened it pretty snug. Not as tight as I could possibly tighten, but it's snug. And now, if we take a straight edge, we should see a definite back bow. You have a nice, even back bow across the middle of the neck. That's, that's what you want. Before it seemed like it was a more sharp type of back bow. Now I'll tighten the strings. Here you can see that nice, gradual back bow. As I tighten the strings, it'll pull it back straight. For right now, it's still kind of in a little bit of a back bow. I made some markings on some of the frets with a blue marker that it they, the fret rocker does rock still a little, but I think the entire neck's really just completely straight or into a back bow. So I'm going to let it set for a week and kind of reassess. I might loosen the truss rod. We'll see what happens. This neck has some really bad looking spots on it and it has some indentations. It has some of the polyester feel soft and I'm just gonna sand it with 400 grit sandpaper so that I can get some shellac to stick to it. And we're just gonna see if we can't put a new little top coat of clear finish on this neck for old Danny boy because he did in his 
attempts to, there it goes flying, uh, to clamp the neck into a back bow, he made some indentations in the polyester, so this should correct that. So actually I was, there was like some marks here from the hanger and it, the, whatever the clear finish was, was kind of soft right there and I was able to kind of pick it off and uh, sand it again smooth and I was wiping it with some acetone because I figured this was polyester but it turns out this might be lacquer. This this is old enough where Fen or, uh, Leo Fender G&L may have still used nitro lacquer and I can actually see some cold checking marks in the lacquer. So correction here, this is a lacquer neck but I can still shellac over it. I'm going to take this pad and get it nice and saturated with shellac and I'm going to wipe it on I'll probably do about 10 coats like this and it'll start to build up so we fret leveled took out that ski jump found some nice lighter gauge strings that this neck can handle and lastly and most importantly is this neck shim the problem before was really high string action and Dan was just completely out of real estate down here with the saddles we couldn't lower him any further and the micro tilt adjustment was screwed in so tight I mean so far basically um, when you take the neck out and what you see is that micro tilt adjusting screw sticking up and I measured how far it was adjusted upwards 80 thousandths of an inch so I took a piece of hard maple which was at a hundred thousandths of an inch and gave it a little taper down in the garage I, I took the plane and I planed it down and then I sanded it a bit and I kept measuring with my calipers till I got to about 40 thousandths on this end of the taper and 80 thousandths over here. Um, the shim, I'm going to pan out. The shim is this size, exactly. I made this mylar template to begin with so that I knew exactly how to cut the piece of maple. And I have another video on this. I'll put it in the link of the description about how to make a neck shim but it took about an hour and so I'm just charging for an hour of labor which I'm giving my friend's pricing to Dan because he's a California man and uh, this guitar is ready to go it has nice low string action 5 64ths of an inch on the bass strings and 4 64ths on the treble so let's give it a listen one last thing I want to do before I go is uh, that stark white maple piece is a little too white so I'm just going to take this burnt umber powdered stain and uh, rub it in but the thing I wanted to let you guys know if you're working on a project like this is the maple material that I used here is actually two millimeters thick and you can search Google or eBay for two millimeter maple headstock veneer that's what they call it and two millimeters is equivalent to like eighty thousandths of an inch and that's where I was getting at with the um, micro tilt was adjusted up at eighty thousandths of an inch so because I don't go down to zero on this end I don't have this ang this crazy angle like I used to what, but what I did get was the neck sitting further this way with the less of an angle see what I'm saying that makes the strings lower or you could just tilt the back edge of it and make the strings lower but then you have this ski jump kind of effect going on so we just wanted to raise the neck up more or less and give it a slight tilt back slight taper all right that's that's how the problem was fixed on this one but the next base could be an entirely different situation so we got to take these one by one as they come there's no fix for every single guitar it's not the same fix but there probably is a fix but it's not always the same fix